Euh, Alex est là. Ok, super. Je vais la présenter rapidement alors. Oui, c'est bon voilà. Alors, Alexia, c'est une militante néo-zélandaise. Elle est de Wellington, ouais. euh, très active en soutien à Julian. Elle est responsable des groupes Facebook euh, Green Weaver Arch et également de Candles for Assange euh, en Nouvelle-Zélande. Elle s'est également très investie lors de la Virtual March for Julian le 11 avril dernier pour commémorer euh, les un an d'emprisonnement de Julian euh, à Belmarsh. So, uh, Alex is a New Zealand activist from Wellington. She is responsible for uh, Facebook support for Julian Green Water Art, Green, sorry, Green Weaver Arch, and also member of Kennels for Assange. She also participates uh, in a virtual match for Assange on Saturday 11th of April and uh, to, to commemorate Julian's one year in prison in Belmarsh. So, it's all yours, Alex. Hi, Alex. Hello. 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 Thank you for having me. Can you hear me? Yeah. Nice. Wonderful. Yeah. Very clear. Well, I'm a pretty angry trinational citizen here. Mm -hmm. I'm ashamed to be British. The courts, government, queen are making a mockery of themselves, except for it isn't funny. This is our kids, free press, disappearing before our eyes. It took thousands of years, literally thousands of years, and rise and fall of several civilizations to gain the right to free speech. And our rogue governments have unraveled that in the space of one year. Britain, the home of the Magna Carta, now just an obedient poodle, Trump's bitch. What on earth could the Queen be thinking? Royal disgrace from Epstein trafficking. Yet she stays silent, no pardon, even while her government conspires to murder Julian Assange, the people's hero, as we speak. I'm embarrassed to be Australian bred, a country that produced the greatest journalist of our time and then hung him out to dry and stuck their heads back in the sand They're leaving his beautiful family to be persecuted. In New Zealand, where I raise my own little Kiwis, the silence and complicity of the media is mind boggling on this issue. Wellington invited the world to Julian's birthday. 62 cities got on board for candles for Assange last year, but they ignored our feel good story here in New Zealand. Worse, Radio New Zealand News Desk asked me to spell Assange. Nikki Hager, New Zealand's top investigative journalist, helped bring us a supporting statement signed by 1,500 journalists. Hedges, Pilger, Chomsky, Ellsberg, but not a single network here gave it a mention. New Zealand's government received our petition for Julian's asylum. All we asked was that they discuss it as an idea in Parliament, but they answered, no jurisdiction. Like cowards with tails between their legs. I have three passports. I should be lucky, but they are making me feel like burning two of them right now. I'm not American, but I might as well be. We're all a vassal state. We're all complicit in the same wars, so they can't keep their broken system unless they can criminalize journalism. And we cannot let that happen. I suspect here I'm talking mostly to activists in this particular algorithm bubble. But I direct this not to those brave individuals around the world, whether they be in Candles for Assange or any other group that we list doing protests. But the rest of you who stay silent, that's who I want to talk to. In the face of all the evidence, we cannot leave this mess for our kids to sort out. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you very much for having me. That was a song played by Alex Taylor outside the embassy in London. And um, he was taken off the streets by the armed task force. So I wanted to play Walsing Matilda again today in lieu of Alex Taylor, who was pulled off the street and his violin confiscated. So thank you for having me so much from Candles for Assange. I so appreciate what you guys do. You've been an absolute godsend really going to Belmarsh so thank you thank you thank you Alex thank you. thanks a lot for your music too and uh, see you uh, in the front of the prison as usual now it's a, a rendezvous I'll try it's a long way to come from New Zealand <laughs> thank you so much and take care. No problem. Thank you, Alex. Bye. Have a nice day. Tu veux traduire, Sophie? No, <sighs> it's okay, okay. Sir. Okay. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. Mm -hmm. To speak up for Julian is our duty, and it's our grain of love to him. A good man is a journalist. A good man is a good journalist. I'm sorry. We are all here to honor the courage of Julian Assange, who is to us the best journalist of our century. But behind that brilliant mind, it's a loving man. The attempt to give him a life sentence and to deny his release on bail, exposing him to a deadly disease, shows once more the cruelty of the US and the UK governments. WikiLeaks cables prove that the US six global domination and that it will do anything to maintain its hegemony. Since 2010, at the beginning of this persecution, the US asked all his allies in the world to find charges against Julian. They violate the, the international law and his human rights to get him. Up to today, they keep on doing it. His life and safety are in a high risk now, more than before. If a revolt occurs at Belmar prison, where he is, he could be trapped among criminals and terrorists that could harm him. Julian has resilience, but the mind gets tired and the body gets exhausted. They stole 10 years of his life. I cannot imagine to what it is to be without sunlight, without hearing a bird or looking at the stars. He was forced to remain on a three by three room for seven years on an embassy and also a spy. They have been trying to break him. It's inhuman and outrageous. Julian opened many people's eyes. That's why he's a dangerous man. He's dangerous to the high powers that destroy our planet. He didn't kill anybody. He didn't harm anyone. His work is mostly about war but nobody persecutes the war criminals. The media helped to defend him. Five of the main Western media published WikiLeaks cables. Where are they now? They should be persecuted, but are not because the media is controlled by the same ones that rule the world. But if Julian gets extradited for telling the truth, then they will go after WikiLeaks journalists. They transform the truth into treason and the messenger into a terrorist. And we cannot allow that to be happening anymore because this is really serious. If we don't have information and access to the truth, we don't have democracy. And a world without democracy is totalitarianism. Our future is in a really high risk. Julian gave us tools to fight. His work is more than an investigative journalism. It's about opening awareness making us feel empathy, bringing back the humanity in us. That's why he's so dangerous too. 
the world has to start thinking with the heart and remembering that what happens to one happens to all of us. He showed his love to humanity. We are here to repay the debt. His faith depends on us. Only the public opinion will make the politicians do the right thing. So the US, UK, and Australia citizens, you have the handle to demand your governments to do the right thing. You are not alone. We are here with you. We are in this fight together. The time to take stronger actions is now, and we are ready. It's not easy. We're facing those who paint the skies red with blood rain. They have declared war to democracy. They have declared war to us, but we share a common responsibility for justice and we won't give up. To defend Julian Assange is defend truth, is defend peace, is defend our world, is defend our future. From Mexico to Julian, all our gratitude and respect and admiration and support. Julian is with us and we are with him and we're going to keep on fighting for him until victory is ours. I want to thank Bicoco for this opportunity. I also want to thank the Mexican journal La Jornada that has been so supportive to Julia for 10 years and to all and to us, our group for a year, to the ABC journalists, Federico Lamont and Yvonne de la Cruz, to Gabriel La Romero from Critical Capital and from Carlos Lario from Reuters, who have been supporting Julian all this time by publishing our protest. Thank you very much for having me here. Julian, we're gonna keep on fighting for you. Thank you, Edith. Thank you, Edith. Merci, merci. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, no extradition, the only one solution. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, bye-bye. It was very Bye. Uh, density. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Edith. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All of you getting here. We all together um, are going to make it. We have will a nice make day. it. Have a nice have day, a day, Edith. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You hear me? Okay. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Hi. to everybody. And thank you for. Uh, organizing this great event for the people. Um, yes, I can hear fine. Okay, hi. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, oh, hang on, hang on. Let me just mute that and then back here. Okay, so um, I am the petitioner to Parliament. Um, I'll just run through some aspects of the petition, give everybody a bit of a background. Um, the petition is a global petition. Uh, it's, it's called the Free Julian Assange Before It's Too Late petition. It currently has over 396,000 signatories and is the fifth largest petition to ever be successfully tabled in the Australian Parliament since 1901, since Federation. It's been tabled in both houses of the Australian Parliament. I've succeeded to get it into the um, upper house, the Senate, in November the 10th, I think it was, uh, 2019, as one of the last petitions to be tabled in Australian Parliament. And with the help of the Australians for Assange, it was also tabled in the House of Representatives or the lower house um, in February, I think it was February the 22nd, don't hold me to that. So we have a petition now that, that covers the Australian Parliament in its entirety. Um, I'll just give a bit of a brief as to uh, the aspects of a petition. Um, and I'll read straight from the Australian Parliament's own information portal, uh, the right to petition federal parliament uh, has been one of the rights of citizens since federation. And it is the only way, I stress it's the only way uh, an individual can directly place grievances before the parliament. So it's the only way. Now, what are the grievances 
that the petition has set forward. And I stress it's, this is a global petition. Uh, it's administered to the, uh, the Congress in the US. It's also administered and sent copies to the House of Commons, House of Lords. Uh, and I'll go into the Royal Prerogative Power of Mercy application that was administered on the 22nd of January. So the petition uh, delegated grievances that are now before the Australian Parliament uh, include demands to free Julian Assange, and I'm just reading straight off the document, free Julian Assange who has been framed for assassination or permanent silencing and torture. Uh, national sovereignty, that's Australian national sovereignty and including Western democracy national so sovereignty will be subjugated to US extraterritorial authority by stealth. Um, if the precedent of extradition occurs, uh, the and number three, the Australian government must formally and immediately intervene and demand bail for Julian Assange or to move Julian Assange into a community safe house to be safe from what the petition considers to be imminent COVID-19 infection. Now, this is in accordance with the uh, prison governors in Britain recommendations for low risk prisoners um, for to be released due to the COVID-19 risk. Now Julian Assange has not been convicted. Um, he is on remand. He should be uh, at least put into a safe house. Julian Assange has underlying vulnerability to COVID-19 and this has been clearly determined by medical practitioners. This vulnerability has been exacerbated by the relentless psychological torture that he has been subjected to in this politically motivated show trial. Uh, if Julian Assange was to be killed by COVID-19 infection in Belmarsh, Her Majesty's prison, signatories would consider this an assassination by deliberate positioning for him for biological COVID-19 infection. Now, the petition has been the platform for the, so what has the petition succeeded with? Well, certainly it's, it's a portal for people like you and me to join together um, and demand that the politicians, responsible politicians, um, directly negotiate at the senior ministerial level, because this is a politically motivated show trial, remember? So politics plays a very important part. Uh, the petition has been the facilitator or an assistant to the facilitator of what's called the Bring Assange Home Parliamentary Group. Now, what that is, is there's about 20 Australian parliamentarians, current sitting senators and ministers of parliament who have joined together as a front to demand and pressure uh, the governments both in Britain to drop the case and bring Assange home. So that is very active and the co-founders, Andrew Wilkie, co-chairs, I should say, Andrew Wilkie and George Christensen uh, went to Belmarsh and visited Julian. Um, it is a cross-party parliamentary group. So it covers the entire parliament from left to right from the Greens to the Nationals sitting together. Now, in addition to the political work um, that I am the petitioner of, I've also used the petition as a platform to uh, present what's called a Royal Prerogative Power of Mercy to Queen Elizabeth. Understand that Queen Elizabeth still remains the, um, the head of state of Australia. Um, she is the monarch as part, Australia is part of the British Commonwealth. So the foundation of the Royal Prerogative Power of Mercy that was administered on January the 22nd is that this is a question not only for Australian sovereignty being subjugated to the United States, but also British sovereignty. Because if Julian Assange was not in the United States when he published the information, um, he published it from Europe, I believe. And here we have the extraterritorial jurisdiction of the United States covering Britain, 
So if the extradition is successful, then any journalist from any Western democracy who happens to pass through Britain or any other ally of the United States where an extradition is in order can be seized if they have published something that a government does not like, and they can be extradited for execution or a life of torture till they die. So this is completely unacceptable, and we see it as a destruction of democratic principles throughout the world. Um, so moving on, how do we win this, in my opinion? Well, we, we win this, I believe, by pressuring, also continuing to join and sharing the petition as much as possible, considering we are all in lockdown. So the likelihood of us going to the streets is very limited. Um, and most importantly, we must pressure our domestic mainstream media to uh, support and push this uh, particular case. So um, I'll just check. Uh, oh, yes, there's, there's one other thing. If we uh, lose this, if, if the uh, prosecution succeeds in extraditing Julian Assange, or if he dies in Belmarsh, Her Majesty's prison, and we see this as a uh, assassination by placing him in the pathway of COVID-19 when he should have been put in a safe house, um, we will move towards a uh, test case because as I'll read uh, Jeremy Hunt's own quote, uh, from, I think it was June uh, 2019. Now, it was in relation to nobody being above the law. And, of course, this includes politicians, but I will read his quote exactly. We wish we will stand together to make it an international taboo of the highest order to murder, arrest or detain journalists or just doing their job. So that is what was stated by Jeremy Hunt, a minister of the British Parliament, and we will do that. We will take this as a test case. The petition will not end if he is killed or if he is extradited. It will be used as a platform, as a crowdfunding platform, in order to seek out who we perceive was complicit in this travesty of justice, working against our democratic principles internationally. And we will seek to prosecute as a test case for history. This is not just only about journalism. This is also about political responsibility. So that is what I want everybody to know, that they should promote the petition as much as possible and, uh, and, and share it because every share results in five signatures on average. It's a very statistical data-driven issue. So I will stop there because I think I've exceeded my time. No, and it's, a, it's three minutes by people because we, we were, you, you are 22 tonight, so... It's, it's hard to make everybody a very um, clear okay. and practical of what they want to say. But I know you make the biggest petition of the world for Julian. And uh, it was important that you explain everything about uh, the impact and uh, how you build that. So I, let, I will let Valentina to translate for French people what you say. And I thank you so much uh, for being there and taking time for Julian and keeping fighting for him and uh, the cause because it's a democratic uh, street. Straight. So what Thank happened. you very much to everybody and love to everybody and good health to everybody mm -hmm. in these difficult times. And uh, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, we're all together. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Fighting together. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hello. Hello again. How are you? Fantastic. Okay, so here is uh, 
top live that you can express yourself and uh, shouting for three minutes so on the, the situation of uh, Julian Assange now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Look, thank you for organising. I'm actually sitting here with a colleague of mine who I work with. This is Mills. Say hello, Mills. Hi, everybody. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for organising an event, a wonderful event. Uh, some wonderful speakers. We, we agree wholeheartedly with everything everybody's saying and everyone's uh, a spirit to, to try and, uh, and do what we can to bring Julian home. Um, we're with Australians for Assange, as you mentioned. We've been working with, uh, with various groups around Australia and internationally on, on various initiatives to try and, and build support and to, to drive uh, increased awareness, um, particularly here in Australia for, for Julian. Uh, we, uh, we have done some work with the parliamentary group, which is now up to 15 parliamentary uh, members that are part, part of the Bring Assange Home Parliamentary Group. Uh, so we hope to keep working with them going forward. Um, we uh, also work with the Australian Assange campaign, uh, the, uh, the political arm of the uh, Bring Assange Home campaign, the political coordination arm. Uh, what we want to do, what we want to keep doing uh, is keep building awareness here and internationally. Um, what is at stake, as you all know, is, is, is very grave. Uh, if, we, if we let Julian go, unfortunately, it's going to mean a very, a very bad, bad result for future generations to come. Um, we, we won't keep everyone too long as part of this event. It's, it's, um, it's, it's wrapping up shortly. So what, what we want to do is just plug our, our next event, which is coming up which is uh, on the back of the uh, virtual march for Julian, the very successful virtual march, which got around 6,000 people joining that group in about a week. Uh, very, very successful event. We, we also today launched our virtual gallery for Julian, which will be uh, the public gallery uh, for the next court hearing that's coming up on the 18th. So that started today. Uh, you can look that up on Facebook. It's Virtual Gallery for Julian. What we're, we're doing is initiating discussions uh, with, with, with supporters as part of a virtual gallery uh, leading up to the hearing as well as during the hearing. Uh, so I think it's really important for supporters to, to get involved uh, and, to, and to try and, uh, and keep creating awareness as part of this. Um, as we move forward, um, we've got lots of other priority or preoccupations at the moment, uh, considering what's happening in the world in lockdown uh, with this COVID virus. So we really need to try and get Julian um, get Julian out as soon as we can. So we'll keep working to that regard. Um, uh, the last thing I want to just plug, if I may, uh, John Shipton's fundraiser. We launched that last week as part of the virtual um, the virtual March for Julian. Uh, that we hope will keep go, keep going. If people, whoever has donated, thank you very much. And whoever hasn't, please try and help John Shipton continue his valuable work over in Europe. His critical lobbying of governments and organisations to help his son. Um, We'll post that again on our links anyway after after the show. But I think I think that's all from me. Uh, thank you very much for all the work you guys do, and it's wonderful to collaborate and work with you. And I look forward to doing that going forward. Oh, it's a pleasure also for us uh, to have you and uh, to let you express what you have to say. And it's a worldwide shout. For, uh, keep fighting for Julian and it was important for you to be there for, for us to have you there with us so thank you very much and uh, do not hesitate to share uh, the video on, the, on every group or to make it very keep, keep it alive as much as, you, as we can yes thank yes we will and thank you very much again for everything you do and everyone uh, and I, well, I look forward to, to working. We look forward to working with you going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. And bye. Take care. Bye bye. Yes. Merci. Hello. Hello.
Just a sec. Let me. Welcome. There we go. Hey there. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. I'm pretty good. Um, I will let you express yourself about uh, the situation of uh, Julian uh, in three minutes. I know it's not a long time, but uh, we, it's the, a successful of a shout about <laughs> your situation. So here we go. My, my kids over there yelling, hey, Connor. Don't please. This is awesome. My name is Steve Boykin and I am an organizer and activist with Action for Assange. We have been holding online vigils for the last 41 straight weeks. We uh, have success. We successfully crowdfunded our way to Washington, D.C. to hold actions and events during the first week of Julian's extradition hearing. And we sent one of our co-hosts to London to cover the trial on the ground. Um, I would like to talk a little bit about what Julian would have to face if he came to the U.S. for court and, and why it's so important to, that we stop this extradition. Uh, the United States has what they call espionage court in the Eastern District of Virginia. Uh, because Julian's case would fall under the, the mantle of national security, um, it's a closed hearing. No press, no gallery, nobody in there but Julian, his defense team, the prosecutor, the grand jury, and the judge. The jury, because it's a national security case, will get a transcript that doesn't have what was said. They'll change the words because some of the words will, will be too sensitive for regular people. The jury itself will be comprised of people who are either related to or know someone in the intelligence community apparatus because of the location of the court. Um, if you think it's a show trial in the UK right now, it will be that on steroids in the United States. Uh, bias judge, bias jury, his defense won't be allowed to see some of the material that the prosecution has to, to use against him. Um, it will be actual kangaroos would be less of a kangaroo court than what he'll see in the U S. Um, it's been mentioned a couple of times about the breakdown of the rule of law regarding Julian's case. It, it is, a slow motion rollout of the erosion of every single UK, Swedish, Ecuadorian, and US law. Um, it is an absolute travesty what is taking place, and it's why we organize and it's why we make as much noise as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. um, we are coming down to the wire and we need to get louder and louder. And I am so grateful to be a part of this today, to know that there are uh, more people that, um, that are getting the word out. So I wanna thank you guys so much for that. Uh, and uh, please, if you're inclined, Tuesday, Wednesday at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern time US, uh, we go live with the free Assange vigil. Saturday is at 1 p.m. U.S. time, which would be like 8 your time in France. Um, we go live with another one, so three times a week. Um, the next vigil, we're going to have Ray McGovern, CIA analyst, and Elizabeth Voss from Consortium News. And uh, yeah, thank you very, very much. You guys take care. You. Free Julian Assange. Free Julian Assange. Yes, it's like a song now. Give a, give the truth a chance. Thank you. Uh,
Il a, il a, il a parlé, euh, parlé d'un... Je ne l'ai pas entendu, sa son avait coupé à ce moment-là. Donc, euh, je vais juste lui demander... Euh, Excuse me. Hello, um, Valentina. The, the, I translate here, and uh, you spoke about uh, uh, something that uh, that will be aired on I don't know in uh, in worldwide, and I could, I couldn't hear uh, the where, when it is and and why it is actually there was a, there was no sound. Oh no. Spoke about uh, it. Okay, so uh, on Tuesday and Thursday. At 9 p.m. Eastern Time U.S. Uh, and on Saturdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time U.S., we are holding the Free Assange online vigil. Uh, Tuesday will be the beginning of our 42nd straight week. Um, we are going to keep going until Julian is free. Um, and yeah, that's my co-host is Andrew Smith. Um, Does that did did you get that? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. All right. Just to translate after for the French people, what's happening? Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. And, and keep fighting, and thank you for what you do and what you keep doing. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you. Paradoxe, bien sûr. Merci. Notre héros. Hero. Hero, our hero. Euh, non, notre héros, c'est Julian, je dois le dire quand même. Voilà. Euh, je sais plus, du coup, j'ai oublié ce que je voulais dire. C'est pas grave. Bonne nuit. Et euh... Bonne nuit, oui, certainement. Et faites tous de beaux rêves de libération. Et free Julian Assange. Free Julian. Bye bye. Merci, bye bye. Bonne soirée. À très vite.